Hello everybody, this is Dragamer back for a Primal Carnage video and you might be asking yourself why are we on Discord? Um, long story short, we basically have a new article that we're going to react to and it's like a part it's a part one so it might be a part two, part three, part four and it's basically a article that it, it will be exploring some of the improvements that will be arriving with the launch of Evolution, which is the console version, and 3.0, which is the big update. So we are going to react to the changes and see what the devs have cooked up for us. Um, okay. The road to 3.0 has begun. Ooh, he's so excited. Okay, so part one, I think, looks like it's going to be talking about gameplay by the looks of it. And yeah, I, I'm so happy that, Prime, that Primal Carnage Evolution is around the corner as well. I mean, I won't personally be doing gameplay of it because I don't have a console. But yeah, I'm sure they'll find other guys that'll do it. Okay, we hope everyone had a raw some summer. Apologies for the last rack of updates. There have been a lack of updates. I mean, the game's been dead for about months. But obviously, the very small development team, very uh, busy working on 3.0 and re the recoding aspect of evolution, which takes a lot of time. So I'm willing to forgive that. Um, okay, so it's all about gameplay. Okay, here we go. Raptor Pounce Recode. Perhaps one of the loudest complaints we've heard over the years has been Pounce sucks. That's because Pounce does suck. <laughs> I mean, when I play it, I don't use the Pounce unless it's a challenge. So, yeah, I, I, I just don't use it. I don't see the point of it, in all honesty. Uh, we agree it never worked 100%. I mean, yeah, that's obviously... If we were to completely start over from square one, a completely immobilizing attack like Pounce might not make the cut. Same with Terra grabbing. I mean, you can't really take Terra grabbing out of the game. If you do, then Pteranodon is just, well, garbage. Okay, here we go. Right, liable, versatile. I don't even know what that means. Several aspects of the Pounce code were rewritten. Okay, so this is a coding change, which will hopefully make Pounce a bit more reliable. Variations in terrain between you and the target. Reliably pounce enemies below you from elevated position. Okay, that's a cool change. <laughs> Can't wait to try that out. New calculations are also make charge pounces much faster. Speed usually the same as a quick pounce. No more slowly ascending into the stratosphere. Yeah, that's like an easy headshot. So that's going to go with the looks of it. There's also a degree of pounce magnetism where you land near a target. If there's a human in view and they are close enough, you will automatically latch onto them if your pounce doesn't exact land exactly on top of the target. Okay. So you like track the beam effect. Looks like they're gonna the pounce is gonna get like this 50th rework, but this one I hope will be the last one. <laughs> okay, spitters. Oh, what a mess. Support classes, one goal for the spitters of increasing their versatility, giving them ways to still contribute without being the most powerful frontline dino. Both of them now with have the last laugh when killed, with their volatile internal juices spewing forth on death. <laughs> Gonna be R-rated this game. Dilo guts everywhere. Okay, so spitters will always form a puddle after dying. Okay, and if they are headshotted, they will actually explode. Hmm. Okay, there's the... Uh, okay, I'm guessing that's the animation. Uh, melting utility of Kralophosaurus has been extended. It can now destroy health and ammo kit. Okay, this is a really good change. I think I mentioned this before, but... That's a really good change, in my opinion. And that's definitely something to look forward to. Wait, it's going to get a buff? Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. Depends on the, on how much health it'll have. I think some of these changes are applied in the open testing, so we could have... A, so I might have a look after this, but... Okay, I don't know how I feel about that, though. Depends on how much health it gets. Okay, so heavy melee again is overhaul again. All primary weapons have a heavy melee attack. If there's an enemy in front of you, then melee in will now perform a heavy melee dash. Oh, oh okay, so I'm assuming that's it by here. Okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, one thing I noticed with using the heavy melee is the knockback is very inconsistent. You know, when I 
go up against somebody, that someone will always seem to get the knockback. When, when I do it to them, I don't get the knockback. Or maybe I do get the knockback, but I just don't notice it. Okay, so if you manage to land a heavy melee hit, small dinos will become staggered. In addition to feeling knockback, this prevents it. Okay, so this locks you into a not attacking for like a microsecond. Ooh. Ooh, I like that animation. Okay, that, okay, that animation looks really good. Kickies. <laughs> okay, so if a raptor began more than someone with low stamina, that he would be able to detach at zero stamina with no consequences. I've seen that quite a few times. They'd even still kill the human. See, the thing I have with pants is when you get up, like, you're locked into not being able to do anything. Whereas the dino is not. So it gets, so even if you get saved, the dino usually only has to hit you once and you just die anyway. So I hope that this will uh, mitigate that. Person they'd pounce on would be playing, yeah, playing their get up animation, unable to defend themselves, which is a problem. Like, my solution would have been to just put a, you know, like a one second invincibility on the human to stop them getting killed. If a mauling raptor runs out of stamina, they'll be kicked away by the human, becoming staggered. The raptor gets control locked for about the same length of time it takes for their victim to stand. Okay, that's fair. Okay, that's a really good change. I like this change. And it should hopefully prevent you from getting insta-killed as soon as the raptor gets off you. But yeah, that's a really, really good change. Uh, bruiser's clip. Bug fixing can often affect balance, and after taking another look at the collision server bruiser's head, but they can no longer deal damage or knock back through walls. Okay. That's interesting. Um That's an ex that's an exploit that I on that I've used many times. Um does it apply through floors? So on U base, for example, on the on the elevated bit, if I come in like this, jump up and hit, will I get the hit? Or will it count it as me hitting into the into the wall? I'll have, we'll have to see about that one. But yeah, that's probably a good change in my opinion. <laughs> it means I can, it makes dodging them easier because my tactic is usually just go right round a tight corner because they don't turn very well. Obviously, I can't do that because they just hit you anyway. But yeah, that's a good change. And going around a tight corner, that's definitely going to be my tactic going forward. Pounding harder. Okay, here we go. Two pound of dactylus. Here's the fun bit. Two per ground pound beat. Yeah, well, let's be honest. It's unanimous. Everyone uses this as a finishing move. I use it as a finishing move. Oh, it's going to get a big damage buff. <laughs> this makes the attack actually worth the risk of attempting. Two per secondary is now... Wait, what? Wait. That's absurd. Wait, so... You can insta-kill? Hang on, I want to look at the animation real quick. Wow. Um, okay, it does have a tighter blast radius, which means you'll have to aim your attack properly. Okay, okay, that's fair enough, but... Ooh. Insta-killing on a direct hit? Oh, that's, that's really intriguing. Okay, I think so far, this is probably the most, the biggest change in terms of nerf slash buff. Of course, there are, like, you know, risk. It's not entirely overpowered or anything. We're also going to look at changing things to where low, low altitude ground pounds deal less damage compared to if you started... To... Oh, oh, okay, oh, okay, this... Okay, that makes this a little bit more balanced. Okay. Okay, so overall, I think... Yeah, that's a nice change. Um, I was a little bit concerned, I'll be honest, when I read this bit. But, you know, seeing all this other stuff... Has put my mind at ease. Boing. I'm particularly effective to jump on Compy's heads for an easy kill. Okay, I think I, someone did tell me about this one, that the dinos will be able to just bounce on humans and kill, squish them. And I think the, yeah, yeah, the bruisers and the tyrants will be able to do it. The big boys will inst, like, what do you mean likely insta-kill? They should insta-kill. They're in 10 ton animals standing on you. If a uh, Pachycephalosaurus jumps on your head, you might get away. Okay, that's fair enough, because Pachycephalosaurus, 
Pachycephalosaurus is like the smaller one, but what's interesting is that it does jump higher than other than the other big boys. So I can't. I think it can clear a human. So does that mean that a Pachycephalosaurus can jump off the ground onto a human and deal damage? Because that is going to be interesting. I think that could be exploitable. So I could come in, hit a human, and then jump on him and kill him instantly. I really can't wait to try that out. <laughs> okay, dart defense. For those of you that hate darts, you'll be happy to know that they will be completely blocked by armor. Okay. Scientists will have to hit soft spots, tyrants. Oh, okay. So the, 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 the tranks only do damage if they hit soft spots. That's fair enough. Tyrants can now brace to prevent darts applying any effect at all. Okay, that gives Brace a bit more usage. I still think they should be able to sprint while in Brace. I don't think that was a necessarily overpowered thing. Concept. But maybe that will be brought back. But yeah, I like this change. It stops them hitting you from a distance as well, which will re come in really handy. The Acro has received a speed boost. And Spino's claw swipe is more lethal. Okay, so Acro and Spino are getting a buff. But apparently Rex is not. We'll be looking at improving Acro's raw ability in the coming weeks too, providing regen over time that is a percentage of health instead of a flat amount. Interesting though that Acro is going to get a speed buff. I think this is good for me. <laughs> this is a good change for me because I, you know, I like to do the tyrant rush strategy: just get in there, get as many kills as you can before you get killed. And Acro is the best tyrant to do that because it's quicker. It's got the foot stomp. So that's going to help my rush strategy a lot. <laughs> Okay, so camera improvements, hard shoulder. Well, I don't play with this camera, so this doesn't affect me at all. But I know some, I suspect some of you guys do. Shoulder camera for dinos were, was reintroduced in Primal Carnage Extinction the last couple of years. Was the awkward clipping where activating this on a bigger class? Okay. Okay, that don't look too bad. I mean, I like to play zoomed out because you can see what you're doing better, but yeah. Oh, oh, so, wait, what, wait, what is this? Spectate the mo camera, had some odd bugs, hidden timer that will stop you being... Okay, that's a, you've seen this. <laughs> the Hulk hands bug, where the uh, first person arms would show in spectator camera view. While well, this was hilarious, it was honestly... Okay, okay, well, they fixed that bug, apparently. I didn't even know that was part of the game. Something related to the camera, but also UI improvement is interactive object highlighting. Okay, so they highlight in the corpse by the looks of it. Corpses still have red outlines when viewed through walls, but will now get a golden glow if you are close enough to use them. Well, at this point, <laughs> I pretty much know the location of all the corpses, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, that's a nice spot. Wait, is that, is that going to be a new one? That looks awesome. I like that. Okay, so we will try out some of these changes. I want, I want to look at the Crowlophosaurus in particular to see how much health it has. Okay, so free. Okay, there we go. Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed that this that the update will come Halloween. I I really hope it's Halloween because I mean it's a sensible move from the devs to be honest. Because in my opinion, I feel Halloween is like the peak time for this game. So putting out a massive update like this on Halloween, it just makes sense. I don't know why they didn't just decide to go that way in the first place. In fact, when they revamped this game back in 2019, I think the first update came out in Halloween. I won't feature every... Okay, that's PS4. Most of the mechanic updates will be included day one, along with over two dozen reworked maps. Ooh. So yeah, I think we looked at the maps in like the previous section. And then like change... Oh wait, is that transfer? Dude, hang on, I want to see that. I want to see transfer. Dude, that looks awesome. So yeah, nighttime mode has been something that's been teased for quite a while. And that is it, I think. So yeah, some interesting changes. I think we're going to look at the Cryolophosaurus real quick, and then we'll end the session. Right, we're going to have a look at the health of the Cryolophosaurus. Okay, 290. I can't, I can't remember what it was before. I think it was 280, so he's, uh, okay, not too big of a bug. Um, I'm sure that puts it above the threshold for a specific class. I 
think maybe Pathfinder. Oh, Ooh, bitty. Okay, so the uh, charge up time is a bit uh, different. Uh, right, that's going to end this session here. It's only a, only a quick one. I just wanted to go through the uh, gameplay changes, and I will be reacting to the other posts when they uh, come out as well. So look forward to that. And until next time, ta ta.